Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name is Joshua Millage, and I'm joined here with Christopher Badgett. And today we're talking about how to create a sales letter for your online course. So my question to you, Chris, is why is it even important that we learn about sales letters? I mean, I'm just a teacher. I just want to teach. Like, what's the point? Well, when it comes down to it, if you're an education entrepreneur, uh, you know, the big job is really creating your, your course and figuring out how you're going to engage with your students. But it's also important more on the entrepreneurial side to figure out how to sell that course and make sure you're uh, clearly communicating your offer. Uh, there's a couple things that come into play that kind of limit education entrepreneurs in the sense of it's mindset stuff where maybe you're a little out of touch of, the be of what we call the beginner's mind or you have something known as the curse of knowledge and we can maybe unpack that as a place to start. Cool. Well, let's, let's dive into it. Well, the beginner's mind, essentially, uh, if you were to tie that to a marketing concept, the marketing concept is to get really clear on your customer avatar. Like, who is your ideal customer? And then you could change out the word customer with student. Um, so that's like an avatar. It's the, the perfect ideal student that you want to teach to and sell your course to. So getting inside the beginner's mind of what is this person coming to you for to learn and like what is their mindset like what is the language that they like to communicate with what types of words are they using to describe their problem or describe the solution they're going for or what they want to learn mm -hmm. so that's kind of the that getting in touch with the beginner's mind is all about you know, zoning in and getting clear on that customer avatar. I think it's really important. I mean, on our other other podcast <laughs> that I host, I had a, a gentleman on by the name of Josh Fagan, and he has the, you know, he's in real estate training, but his customer avatar was insane. And he had it down to like, and Joe was in a car accident four years ago, and he has three kids, and, you know, he limps with this, uh, you know, because of this car accident, and uh, just all these details of this guy's life, but Joe was fake. I, I don't know if his name was Joe, but he had a name for him, and he, he when he wrote his emails, he was writing to this guy, and because he was writing to a, 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 a person who made up a lot of different aspects of his customer base, he was able to create really personal emails that people would then respond to him and say, hey, like, I think you, I felt like you were really talking to me. And the trick was just actually talking to an imaginary character that embodied who your customer actually was. Um, but I think that that learning, if we take that learning into the online course space, it's really important to do that with our students. And I think one of the easiest ways to do this is if you have a student base already, to get to know them, to pick up the phone and call them if there's, a, you know, I think talking to people on the phone is one of the most incredible things that people don't do because they don't, uh, they, they're just like, I don't have the time, I don't, whatever, they carry all these excuses, but at the end of the day, they don't know how to speak to that person because they're not actually touching them. So I think taking the time to build a customer avatar, but maybe we should coin the term student avatar um, for people who are doing online courses is absolutely crucial, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. And that, that really is what the beginner's mind is all about. And on the other side of that is what we call the curse of knowledge. So this is kind of what the educator uh, experiences in the sense that they've spent all this time and life experience building up this skill set that they're now going to teach. But it's important to remember to meet the customer where they are and not get bogged down mm -hmm. in all those little subtle things that you've learned that have kind of moved down to your subconscious that you're no, you have to kind of pull that stuff back up so that your messaging can be really clear and spot on. And there's a, a marketing concept here that's important to learn, and I'm going to use a, a quote from Henry Ford from the automotive industry, where he said, if he had given people what they want, he would have given them faster horses. But yeah. instead, he, he built a car. So sometimes our ideal customer in their beginner's mind, they may not even know what they want, need, or clearly uh, be able to articulate their problem. So that's, the, that's more of an advanced challenge is how do you step into that conversation with your ideal customer and uh, communicate in such a way that you have, your person is having light bulbs going off when right. essentially their subconscious mind is saying, wow, this person really understands me. They get where I'm at. 
oh my gosh, I never realized this could be the solution to my problem or this is the exact skill I really need. I didn't realize that. Those kinds of internal self-talk is really what you want to get to. Right. I, I couldn't agree more. I think one of the things that I want to share is to switch gears and get a little bit tactical here in our, our time today. And, and that is talk about some proven formulas that people can use to start to write their sales letters around. And one of those is AIDA, which stands for Attention, Interest, Desire, and Action. It's a very old formula kind of uh, put together. I'm not exactly sure by who, but I'm sure it was Ogilvy or one of the, the great ad geniuses of like the 1930s and 40s. And uh, it you know, it's a really easy proven formula for putting together a sales letter that takes someone from realizing that that what you're doing can help them to actually taking action. So, if I, what do you think, Chris? Should I just go through it for him? Yeah, let's start with A. A A is attention. So that really comes back to your headline, and I think a lot of people look at their headline as um, they they don't spend enough time thinking about it, or they spend way too much time think too much time deliberating on it, and they don't take action and actually create a headline. So to make it really simple for you, your headline should really only do one thing, and that is to get someone to read the second line. And I know that sounds crazy, but the idea here is that you want your prospect or your, your potential student to read the entire sales letter, the entire course description, what the course can do for them, how the course will help them in their lives or profession or whatever it may be. And that headline is just to get them to stop and start to read. Um, it's a cool- I can, I can give a good example of Yeah, please that. do. Um, so in my experience, I created a free course and I titled it, How to Build a WordPress Website in a Weekend. And that, that title there, it wasn't just WordPress 101 or WordPress for Beginners or whatever. It's, it kind of grabs your attention in the sense that I'm making the promise that you can build a, a WordPress website in a weekend. And, and right now I have almost 7,000 students in that free course. And, um, but that, I think, really ties into getting the attention in the headline. Yeah, and I, I'm going to use a really crude example that I heard Ryan Holiday, who wrote a book, Trust Me, I'm Mine. He's a, he's, an, he's a young man. He's like 24, 25, and he wrote a very good book um, about modern PR and attention and how to make things go viral and that sort of thing. He was the he director of marketing for American Apparel I'm like 22. I mean, the, the kid's kind of a phenom. But he said something, and again, I'm going to be a little risque here, but he said one thing that people forget about with, when doing things online is that pornography is one click away. And his point is that I, have, <laughs> I do not support pornography in any way, shape, or form, but his point is things that are biologically addicting are one click away. So keep that in mind. Someone, if anything, whether it's clothes, food, anything that someone's addicted to, anything is at your fingertips. And so what are you going to do to make someone stop and take a brief second to read your headline? Like the headline should have one goal. It should carry the weight of stopping you in your tracks going, that's for me. I think people, what they do is they try and speak really broad, like eat better with my course. It's like, Who's eating better? Speak to me. I want to read that and be like, vegans, you know, three ways to make five meals in less than, or, you know, three formulas to make infinite amount of meals in 20 minutes or something. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just wrapping her here. But the, the point is they should literally stop and go, wait a second, that, that headline, that whatever it is, that sales letter is speaking directly to me. Um, and so I actually heard a guy who's a very smart copywriter named Dane Maxwell talk about the the formula for a headline is really um, pretty simple. So it's desired result in an amount of time addressing the obli uh, the the objections. So like, um, what what would be an example of this? Let's think. Um, Let's do something on your vegan example of how um, how to make vegan breakfast. So yeah, so. Uh, you know, if people think that vegan breakfasts are like difficult and hard, you could say like something like five vegan recipes, five delicious vegan recipes using five ingredients that all take less than 10 minutes to create. So it's like talking about the time frame or like what people want, which is delicious vegan meals, like in less than, t you know, addressing the objections of time constraints and, and really painting a picture of what the outcome is. It should just capture you really quick. That one's a little hard because I'm not a vegan. 
But, you know, one, one thing, one headline that really struck me was, um, and there's a bunch of different ways to do headlines. If people want to th- learn about some really good headlines, there's a, a book called Breakthrough Advertising. But one of them that I heard from way, way back was a music training um, program. And it was, this one doesn't use that formula, but it says um, something along the lines of, they laughed at me when I sat down at the piano, but when I started to play, they were amazed. So like the idea that people, you know, that really identifies with someone who doesn't understand how to play piano, like, oh, I think people would laugh at me if I sat down. But then with that training course, when I started to play, I'm an expert and I'm going to amaze everyone. So it's kind of like, wait a second, what is what does that say? Like you read that and you're like, wait a second, huh? And you read the second line and the third line and the fourth line. So again, we're going off on tangents here with the headline, but really the whole thing is to hit the parking brake, stop and read the second line. So the second line, or really the second part of the ad should be engaging the interest mechanism in that person. So causing them to be interested in what you have to say. It's opening and closing loops. It's saying, you know, let me tell you a story, or let me tell you how you can create all these vegan meals, but first let me tell you a story about my experience being a vegan. And so you're saying something's to come so you're going to have to read to get there, but let me tell you a little brief story. So it's like it's, it's engaging them to, to be interested. And then the third part is desire. So it's, it's, it's pushing on those desire mechanisms, making them want the outcome that your product, or in this case, your course, can give them. And then the fourth aspect is action. So you're t- literally telling them what to do next. Click the button. Enroll now. Register in my course. You know, Enter in your name and details, and we'll move. You know, like it's very... This, this methodology is very direct response, but the thing is, you cannot assume that your prospect or your potential student knows what to do. You ne- literally need to outline them, uh, outline it for them. So John Carlton, who's another great marketer and copywriter, said he created what people call the Carlton- Carltonian formula, which is, here's what I got, here's what it does for you, here's what to do next. That's another kind of copywriting and and sales letter formula that works really well. These are very time tested. You can go and just type Carltonian formula or John Carlton sales letter, find that. Um, Dan Kennedy, who's a, a very uh, prolific direct response copywriter has a, a book on sales letters. All of these people essentially say the same thing though. Get their attention, tell them, you know, give them the interest mechanisms, show them why they would be interested, elicit desire and tell them to take action. And so I think these are just key things that people need to think about when they're writing that that piece of copy that goes with actually registering for their course. Absolutely. And if I can tie it in and like kind of bridge the gap between internet marketing, sales letters and online courses, course descriptions and things like that. Many of us have a love-hate relationship with marketing. You don't want to be seen as like a used car salesman. And, and for a lot of people on their <laughs> totally. entrepreneurial journey, they, they learn to like embrace marketing and, and they eventually realize that uh, it's just a necessary part of doing business. Daniel Pink wrote a, a great book called To Sell as Human. Highly yeah. recommend it. Uh, but once you, know, you, see, you study sales letter, you're going to... You Google that and you start looking around, you're going to see a lot of like red headlines and yellow highlighter. But I just want to encourage people to not be dissuaded by, you know, that what may feel like kind of scammy, but just like look at that stuff and learn from it. And at the end of the day, it's about making a promise, putting your offer out there, getting people's attention for your online course in a way that you really connect with people and, and get their attention. So when we talk about things like headlines, we're talking about the actual title of your course or you know a sub-headline and the description of your, horse to, your course to really get uh, attention. Or maybe you're writing a blog post and you're in pre- the pre-selling mode about this course you're going to create. So these are all opportunities to you know, create he- what we're calling as headlines and, and then get into the actual content and, yeah. and elicit that interest and call to action and desire and those things. Well, I think people, you know, marketing in a lot of ways um, is a dark art. It is, you know, you, you can learn some very powerful things in marketing about persuasion and about uh, changing human behavior. And, and with that is kind of that classic Spider-Man saying, it's like it, with res- great responsibility or with great power comes great responsibility. And it's definitely true in marketing. But I think if I were to end with this thought is I think the most powerful marketing is simply the, the 
course instructor's story. And the reason I say that that's the most powerful marketing tool is that for one, it's truthful. And if you can't tell your story about how you became an expert, you shouldn't be teaching the course. So any marketers who are listening, who abide by the whole like, let me go pre-sell something I don't know and then learn about it real quick and then teach, I just think that's wrong. And I, I don't think that, that you should be participating in what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do with Lifter LMS, what we're trying to do with the new vision of Codebox and, and changing the online education is creating tools for people who are actually teachers, who actually care about their students' learning. Um, I think this is the fundamental difference between people who are looking at learning management systems that are really focused on learning and people who are lo looking at new course systems or, or membership. And I don't want to digress too much because we've already created a, a podcast all about this, but really tell your story. Tell why you're an expert. Talk about that journey. You talk about, is it, uh, his last name's Campbell, right? The hero's journey. Joseph Campbell, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Talk the monomet. Yeah. Talk about your journey about about being a beginner and, and, and all this, the pain and struggle and, and triumph and victory and defeat of learning whatever it is that you're going to teach. That is the most powerful marketing. That, that fits right in with attention, interest, desire, action because you can take your story and mold it into that. And you know what? You don't have to feel bad about it at all because you lived it. You experienced it. Maybe your story is you were an undergrad who was dissuaded by job opportunities and, you know, you, you found yourself down and out and so you started freelancing and then you started a company and then now you can actually speak to the fundamental business nuggets and you want to train the world. I mean, that's kind of like my story. Like, that's not a lie. Like, I lost it all. I was on my parents' couch. I had no option. My back was up against the wall. I started freelancing and then boom, as the story rolls on, Codebox happened. Lifter LMS happened. Joining Forces With You happened. And I can speak to these things about partnerships and about you know, picking yourself up by your bootstraps. And I, can, and I can speak from it from a very real and true place in my heart because I lived it. There's no lie at all. I'm not embellishing anything. Like, it's been a hard journey, but now I can take that journey, package it in a course, train people, and, and I believe that information will help change the way that people look at business. And so that is yet to come. That is, um, it's going to happen in the next six months. I'm going to create some courses. We're all going to create courses. What a better way to show people how to, how to create to market and sell courses online uh by you know simply just doing it ourselves <laughs> absolutely and just to echo your sentiment josh the you know being telling your story helps your current students and future prospective students really connect with you on a personal level right and if you happen to be part of the lifter lms uh plugin that we created our vip community and you saw us launch that the course or the uh the plugin uh, you notice how we did a full full video about how it all started with breakfast, and I told my story about making my first course about how to make better omelets, and then we went on this whole journey to where this this plugin now became available to the world. So, if you're if you're looking for another example that you may have seen before, there you go. It works, man. Well, I really hope that people find this valuable. It helps. Uh, teachers look at their courses and their life experience in a different way and be able to package it and uh, make it a little bit more persuasive, hopefully get them more sales and really uh, have more impact. I mean, that's that's the key thing here is we want to help people have more impact by using online education, using WordPress and our plugin to make that happen. So any closing thoughts, Chris? Uh, I would just say one of the common mistakes that people make when they're writing headlines and copy is that they focus on the features and not necessarily the benefits. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling your personal story and you're getting into like what it will do for the student, you know, the number of modules you have and all these things are important, but what's really important is your message of like, what journey are you going to take me on? Mm -hmm. What are you going to teach me? How is my life going to be different after I take this course? Not how am I going to get there? Absolutely. I think it's a great, great way to cap off this episode. All right. Well, until next time, you can reach me at Joshua at LMScast.com and Chris over here at Chris at LMS.com. So until next week, we'll talk to you soon.